What's up, guys? Welcome to Rise Elevate Podcast. We're back with another beautiful interview, interview 48, and I got the GOAT himself. Uh, he's a DJ, he's a rapper, he's an a entrepreneur, most importantly, too. Um, he's a, He does clothing, his own clothing lines. Um, dude, I can go on and on. What else do you not do, man? Like, uh, that's some, that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> you do everything, bro. I try to keep it busy. The other thing is you do everything to the to full ability. You know what I mean? It's not like you're just half working, you know, one thing at a time. It's like you're putting your full energy in everything. And how do you do that, bro? Like, that's like, a good question. So honestly, I worked with Trader Joe's for 14 years. Okay. And it came a point where I realized music and fashion and everything got to a point where it was doing really good. But I realized that working full time at Trader Joe's while trying to pursue this at a high level, I, I, I plateaued. I was like, man, if I stay here full time, this is as much as I can act, actually do. I, I'm only one person with so much time in a day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, at some point, man, like I, I windled my days back to like one, two, three days a week right, or something right, right. like that. And then even then, it was kind of like the universe was like, go ahead and get on out it's of time here. time to bro. make the just, change. Just go ahead and take this leap. So right. at the beginning of the year, I actually kind of just left Trader Joe's full time, which, by the way, shout out to Trader Joe's. That place changed my yeah, life. There's a reason yeah. why I was there for 14 years. They yeah. really support local artists and, and helping people and the management staff. I mean, you name it. I have nothing but great things to say about that company. And if you're a rising artist, you're looking for a part-time job or something like Definitely that. Definitely Trader Joe's. Or Target. I prefer Target. Too. <laughs> Target's a really good place. Yeah. I worked there before I quit okay. full-time. And, um, you know, before we even dig into this, I kind of wanted to ask, you know, where are you from? Like, where, where is, where's the stomping grounds Small at? Small town in the foothills of North Carolina called okay. Forest City. That's awesome. I always tell people it's a good place to drive through and not stop. <laughs> was it like I'm not saying obviously it was different but do you think the change of pace was different from being from North Carolina to South Carolina some people would want to know uh because that's well I, 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 let me take it back a little further so whenever I graduated high school my best friend he went to NC State which is Raleigh the tri-state yeah. area and whenever he moved up there he's like Mike if you ever going to take your music serious or anything you got to get out of this little small town because I mean, to this day, if you go back to my small town, it looks like they're trying to preserve it for a movie or something. It's, wow. It, it has yeah, like a historic type deal. Oh, well, I mean, they get like a Chick-fil-A and it's like, oh my God, we got a Chick-fil-A. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like really small. But with that being said, I was lucky enough that my best friend, shout out to Kev, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he went to NC State and he's like, bro, if you're ever going to actually take this stuff serious, you should come up here because this is the tri-state. This is a thriving metropolis of people from all over the country going to duke unc right. and this was like high school time this was right after high school wow. so i ended up going to a small community college up there called wake tech and uh i didn't stay there too terribly long but, were you uh, rapping or DJing? Oh, yeah, no. which one were you doing mainly? so djing only came about like not even a year ago oh, like wow. i bought the equipment awesome, back in bro. november so this is a, a new out. hustle but yeah, the, but the rap shit has been around you know, it started like rapping when I was like 16-ish, and okay. then it got more and more serious by 19. I was doing some super shitty recordings, but I was taking it serious. SoundCloud stuff or? Oh, SoundCloud wasn't even around back in these days, bro. We talking MySpace shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you probably no. don't even know what MySpace is. I know MySpace, is. bro. Okay. You, yeah, you log We're on to the profile, back. you got your favorite song going. Damn, my shit was Wu-Tang. I, I didn't even think I had my like actual rap name at that time. So that was like LimeWire and uh, FrostWire era. Man, yeah, uh, line, that might have been a little bit before that, but yeah, yeah. we're we're going back at yeah. that point. But that's but, still cool though, man. And I yeah. just wanted to say, you know, I'm proud of you for how far you came Thank because, you, um, you know, it's kind of like, it's like you've adapted so fast. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're not even talking about uh, SoundCloud and you're talking about MySpace, bro, some people who deal with who dealt with that era don't even know how to work a phone still. Yeah. So yeah. like, for you to be able to do what you do in Excel, like, yeah. dude, yeah, I don't. I don't think people will give you enough flowers for that, but we'll, we'll, we'll go on to the next thing. But I wanted to ask, um, you know, was it something when you were rapping, was it like an MC type vibe or was it just like, you know, vibing on the like freestyling with their homies? Like what kind of rap were you doing at that it's age? Great, it's a great question. Great yeah. question. I tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it back even a little bit further. Go for it. I wanted to, but you know, <laughs> right, right, right. I ain't afraid to talk about it, but you know, before what we were saying, so, I didn't want to do, you know. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. So when I was 
growing up. This this guy right here is my best friend and cousin. He passed when we were 16. So before I ever got into hip hop, I was a death metal drummer and I still love metal to this day and I love drums. I have a drum kit, so I love metal. But when he passed, he had a drum kit too and we put our kit together to make mm -hmm. one giant like slipknot kit, right? Mm -hmm. But when he passed, that I, it would, I couldn't be around the drums too much. And there was a big void in my life. This guy was my life. And when you're 16, relationships like that are everything. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a big void in my life. I, I didn't really have a, a best friend. And my new best friend, which is the guy Kevin I was just mentioning, uh, he had entered my life and he was huge into Wu-Tang of all people. So and when, how we got a, to know each other is I gave him a Slipknot CD. He gave me Ghostface Killer CD. Oh wow! And uh, I love that, that literally changed my life. But to get back to how he was rapping, so back in those days, Eminem was on the scene and he was known as this battle rapper, and he made it really trendy to freestyle. So all we did in high school was you would smoke a lot of blunts and weed. Whoever didn't have the blunt in the car or wherever you was at, you was to freestyle. But everybody could freestyle, and it didn't really take a lot of dedication to freestyle. But as I'm listening to Wu Tang. I'm like, these guys are not just winging it. These are brilliant, smart mm -hmm. people. They're actually thinking about this. They're writing it down and committed to yeah, memory, right? Yeah, they to this day. So with that being said, I was the first person out of my crew to come to a freestyle cypher with a written. And uh, everybody mm -hmm. hated on me except for one guy, yeah. and his name is Crazy J. And mm -hmm. to this day, me and Crazy J are best friends. Uh, Crazy J um, got in a car accident around the same time that he passed, mm -hmm. and he had C5 complete, which means he's paralyzed from a neck down. Mm -hmm. So talking about being his right-hand man, uh, I literally would write his lyrics for him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like his right hand and his right hand, you That's know what I mean? So uh, but I get, because I, of him, though, yeah. because, because of him, I mean, talk about, imagine you can't move from the neck down. What is something cool and progressive and relevant and... Uh, Swaggy, like what? What's something you could do that would keep you relevant and cool in the eyes of the youth? Hip hop literally saved this man's life. All you need is a brain and a mouth, and as long as you got a brain and a mouth, you can rap and freestyle yeah, and touch yeah. people's hearts and soul with emotions. And Crazy J has always been uh, a brilliant mastermind when it comes to those kind of things. So, yeah, my man's passed. That opened the gate to meet Kev. Me and Justin Cole or Crazy J started freestyling a lot, and. Uh, I was the one that kind of was like, nah, I should probably start writing. And the yeah. next thing you know, I wrote, but then he started writing. And we were basically sharpening each other's sword for the next, like, 10 years. And so. that <laughs> explains a lot with your music. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of people would be interested on how you were kind of getting your energy from your music. And, I like, for me to hear your music now, it explains everything. Like, mm -hmm. you have passion in your music. Um, and, you know, like I was saying before, when I heard your music, it was like a, it was like a different. You know what I mean? It's not like everybody else is around here which i see it now you know? well, so how funny. do you feel about that though i wanted to ask like do you think that you bring a whole different type of music to the scene like around here honestly i'm still trying to reinvent myself and find myself i, I really i'd like to try to like i still feel like there's a a, a fine middle ground that is that is going to be overall me and my arcing sound because what happens is is i'm very much cut from the cloth of like the 90s boom bap Griselda, Grammy, you know, maybe even DJ Premier, Pete Rock. I love that kind of stuff because that's kind of what I grew up on and what I like. However, I love Kendrick and J. Cole and Chance and Mac and a lot of these people I think do a great job of making quality commercial music. Right. So I want to I want to be able to make something that's on the radio, but I'm I I don't. I would sound so ridiculous trying to make a Migos track and be serious. Yeah, about it, right? right. So there's right. a certain level of artistic integrity that even as commercial as I maybe need to go from a marketing standpoint, there's only so much I can go without before I sacrifice being authentic. So what I'm able right. to actually pull off as a white person. Yeah, no, 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 no. But with that being said, though, uh, you know, one of the guys that really I inspires me so much that is incredible. I feel like he's ushering in his own style, sound, swag, and all that. Tyler, the creator, man. Oh, wow. And, and with my name being live, I really value energy and live performance. Yeah. So not only is this guy uh, a brilliant producer and exactly. is able to, yeah, like, I mean, you, name, name a category. It. Like, Tyler is really that dude. Yeah. And uh, hopefully one of these days I'll be able to chop it up. No, you will. You manifest it, bro. Because I yeah. actually was, like, now that I say that, yeah. or you said that, it, it, bro, it just, like, bro, you... 
that's that just blew my mind <laughs> no for real because I, I see that you know what i mean i see that on you. Guy, and like you're doing a lot of the similarity things even with the music like you're mm -hmm. staying in your own lane and then you're also growing and you know because you showed me two different tapes i believe right yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. showed me the green which tape. they have very different vibes, yeah and like know? i that's what i'm saying i i peep bro like i don't do this for shot if, if your thing was not good i would already told you I'd <laughs> curious, what are ways to fix it you know but you already bring a whole different type of music to the mm -hmm. scene which I'm surprised not. I don't think that many people have the, the attention span to listen to that music anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because, right. like, that's the problem with this world is we want to hear the Migos. Right. You know, we want to hear the little Yachty. And, but we never want to give flowery where it's due when you're making passionate music like how you got, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and making clothes like you got. Let's talk about that. How was your show, man? Like, was your show, like, something that was it living up to what you wanted it to be? Or, you know, because I heard you were... You know, dealing with some things behind the scenes and stuff, which it happens with anything, even your music, DJing. Mm -hmm. um, so, how, did it live up to your expectations? Man, I, so if I had if I had to keep it a book, man, I'm I'm, uh, and I think every artist is this way, where you're your own biggest critic and yeah, critique. Yeah, so yeah. I can technically have a successful show and I can still pick it apart. But the fashion show that night, shout out to my whole team. It, it was literally I walked away so proud of that night. Um, and I can't name everybody, but you know who you are. If you're on the mm -hmm. team and helped manifest that night, I was only one person. I spearheaded it. I was the Tarantino of it, but if you watch a Tarantino movie, there's a whole list of people that made yeah, that yeah. magic happen. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So uh, I'm extremely proud of that night, and um, I really hope that that spearheads some, like a fall one and so on and so forth. We can get the whole team back together. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, so long story short, considering everything, the beginning of the year started off really rocky for me. So the, the fashion show was March 4th. What was the name of the fashion show? I, I thought it was we, the first Lap of Fashion okay. Show. Okay. I didn't Lafayette know if there was show. like, I saw that the new event coming up the March 27th is, or May 27th is the... So that was the Elements. That's yeah, the second I thought it was, annual one. I'm trying okay. to make this an annual thing. So, so the Elements show is uh at the music farm mm -hmm. thank you guys for the opportunity they, uh, this is my first time that the music farm has gave me a saturday night so I'm wow proud of that. that's a big night too bro. I'm, I'm very thankful yeah, so that's i'm a hoping big night. i'm hoping you know throughout my career was led what, what's been my stepping stones is you put yourself in a good position to get an opportunity but now it's like all right now you have this opportunity what are you going to do with it so here we have a good opportunity and we have me and doa mm -hmm. have every intentions on knocking this out of the park. so it's like so, a make sure like a concert and a, a b-boy event great, great question so by the way this is hip-hop's 50th year anniversary wow, right I didn't so know that. so with that being said uh the elements is basically a celebration of hip-hop culture but the reason why it's called the elements is because we're highlighting graffiti mm. we're highlighting b-boy in the music farm at the music farm wow yeah, yeah, yeah. that's gonna be dope yeah mc and dj right wow. only element shout out to beatboxers unfortunately i just don't know a lot of you guys i, I can't know find few, nobody i know a few i can find not listen more. there's a difference between i know a few we all know yeah. we also got an uncle that dances but he don't break like the doa you feel <laughs> yeah, me? That's a fact. so that, yeah. that there's a big yeah. level of difference like if you go on youtube there's guys that are different you know what i mean and this night right here is literally literally uh olympic level type of quality well i mean you're, you're headlining it bro of course it's gonna be, <laughs> you know what i mean it's gonna be a high expectation and and, and and i'm really gonna pull some stunts out that sure, night i'm going man. i'm going for Don't the go there being live normal. entertainment mm -hmm. value but with that being said so we got uh il tack from riley he's been my right hand guy every time i've done something i need a graffiti it'll tax me my guy um dj and we're hoping to get mickey which mickey is an incredible b-boy himself but he's also hopefully he pulls up and he'll show and prove you'll see what right. i'm saying we got dj iq can't remember where that gentleman's from but he's also like certified legit and of course doa doa, yeah, DOA. if i'm not mistaken doa is the only b-boy crew in south carolina yeah i mean they've been standing strong since music in motion days if, if anybody you probably never heard of music in motion i mean mm -hmm. oh man dude that's kind of where they started if i'm not wrong if correct me tell doa to hit me up man we gotta get an <laughs> interview going i'll get all them boys on here they're incredible um shout they're out incredible. to everybody on there especially uh delma love you delma um, but no, other than that, and like, you know, you got a lot of things going on. Let's talk about a little bit about your merch, too, because like, um, you know, I think a lot of times people are focused on your music and what, you know, 
we got going on, we don't think about the merch you be rocking and, and how fly you be coming in here. This got man the, came in with some fresh J's. I was like, yeah. Got socks on. Look at these things, man. I was like, golly. So let's talk about that. Like, what, uh, what's going on with that? Like, you got anything coming up? Or, yes, you know, sir. you don't have to fill us in too much. I know how it is, but I just some people would want to know. Yes, sir. So the biggest news out of the fashion world for me right now, I was lucky enough to land my clothes inside of another Cola Kicks. Yeah. And Tanger Alley Mall in Long Island, New York. How'd that start here? Like, was that something you just kind of woke Man. up and went to Cola Kicks and was like, yo, put my stuff in you there? You are going to love this story. <laughs> ready for it's, it. it's not a huge story, but the the premise of it and the 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 meat of it, I, somebody like you, I've kept up with you, so I know you yeah. like that, like, yeah. positive stuff, yeah, right? Always. It's a real simple story, but that's the beauty in it itself. So I work out at James Island Gold's Gym, and I've been there for like three, four years. And I'm in there working out one day, and there's this guy wearing er Eric Emanuel shorts. If you know, you know. So <laughs> they're like $300 basketball shorts, maybe I even more. They're, they're, they're just extremely. You talk about light skin, dude? Uh, well, let me, let me get to that. <laughs> I already know who it is. I've seen pictures. He's a white guy. No, I see guy. the uh, shorts. Like, oh, you're certain... talking about Eric Emanuel? Yeah, I've oh, okay, seen those. Okay. So only certain people wear those. I already know. So, long story about. short, I know what these shorts are. I know how expensive they are. And they're also just very fresh. And, like, coming from me and my my style of being a sneakerhead, it's very much a sneakerhead's world of, like, super flex shorts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, so I see the guy at the gym wearing them, and I just decided to walk up to him. I was like, hey, man, just want to give you props on them shorts, like some fire shorts. I just walked up and complimented a stranger. And he responded with, what size you wear? And I was like, I thought that was odd. I'm like, not to me. Because normally you just be like, ah, thanks, man. You know, right. it's like, whatever. Nice to meet you, whatever. He said, what size you wear? I was like, that's odd. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, well, I actually own Cola Kicks. I was like, huh. I was like, I happen to be wearing my shit that day. Oh, right? so you were. And I was like, hey, man, what's it take to uh, get some clothes in there? And he turned out to be the coolest guy. And we hooked up a deal. And that was over a year ago. Wow. Now, fast forward. So that was last March 5th mm -hmm. was my first day at the store where I made my first livelihood sale in a retail store at a Tanger Outlet Mall. Just a huge, super huge big deal for me. I, I was able to quit Trader Joe's thanks to, the irony is my brand's called Livelihood mm -hmm. and like literally now, this clothing line is my livelihood. I make the right. majority of my income off of these clothes. So the irony in that. But with that being said, fast forward a year later, uh, March 4th this year, I had my first fashion show. Uh, around that time, they confirmed that they were going to be in Staten Island at the second busiest Tanger Outlet Mall in the company. Wow. And uh, yeah, so once again, I, I found that same guy, wow. the same guy with Eric Emanuel. So I was like, hey man, what's the tape? Get your clothes up there. I see, I see we, why you. We worked out a deal, and Mar uh, May, May 12th, I'll be flying to New York basically for my first time to experience the You've city. You've never been to New York? I went 15 years ago for one night and it was trash. Right. Uh, they took me to a bar. There was a country band playing there. I know I got an accent. I do not like country. <laughs> it's a beautiful genre. I respect the genre is right. good, but it's just taste wise. Too, yeah. It's not my thing. Oh, so I was there for less than 24 hours to see a country brand in the middle of Brooklyn. I don't even count that. Don't even count it. Right. I left the next day. So this is my first official New York experience mm -hmm. of I'm going to be there for five days. I'm staying in Times Square. You're going to love Obviously, it. my clothes are out there in Long yeah. Island. So I don't know, man. I'm really excited. I'm hoping this leads to bigger, powerful mm -hmm. moves. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, we all just want to live uh, financially free. Yeah. You know, I mean, about bills and shit. Sooner or later, you won't be thinking about financially free. You'll be thinking about what you're trying to do to make an impact on people's lives. Because yeah. I already feel like you kind of are helping people. Um, you know, there was there's a handful of people I know that have been following you and they don't just follow you on Instagram. They follow your movement. They follow what you do. They get creativity ideas from you, even if they don't want to give you flowers or not. You know, it's up, man. It's just how it is. And, um, bro, it's just it's been beautiful hearing your story because I told you all in the messages, like, I think a lot of people will get impacted by your story. And I, I've been impacted just to hear this because you're not flourishing in just one thing. Mm -hmm. You're flourishing like five different categories that some people struggle just to do one in. Like that's insane, dude. I don't even think you realize that. Like that's pretty cool, bro. That's goals for me. I do gaming. I do cakes too. Um, you know, I do podcasts. I'm about to do so. I I I give you full flowers. So, um, where can we find you, or where can we find your merch on, or your music? Is it all on one thing, like a link tree, or is it all? 
So I need to I need to work on a link tree, man. Yeah. I, I follow and I study and take notes. And some of the most legit people around here definitely have the link tree. I'm yeah, you need on to that. do it because they'll put everything in one thing. So if you wanted someone or if you're trying to get merch, hey, go to link tree. Boom. Hey, you want to see my music video? Go to link tree. Like you just say one thing for eight different things. You know? True, true, true. So. You're absolutely right. What's up, guys? I want to give you guys a quick commercial break brought to you by Livelihood. Make sure you hit up Livelihood Fits on Instagram. DM me Mike Live. You get 10% off. Holla. Peace. So far as Mike Live concerned, you just have to spell a lot. And the same thing for Livelihood. Mm -hmm. If you go to Google you or YouTube or Spotify, I'm on all platforms. Mm -hmm. So you type in Mike Live, but the the... I in live is an exclamation mark. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do that, it just pops up the trillion other live videos or, right. or recordings in the world. Right. And uh, same thing for livelihood. You know, if you look up livelihood and you don't put the exclamation mark, it'll take you to another bunch of other places. But the moment you add that exclamation mark, it weeds out all that Everything. bullshit and leads you straight to me. Yeah, so that's awesome, man. That's yeah, awesome. man. Livelihood fits is the Instagram page, and in the bio there is a link, and you click the uh, that website, it'll take you right to the website to be able to buy stuff. We're currently updating the site and add a bunch of new stuff that will be in the New York store mm -hmm. and uh, we got a lot of cool summer shorts coming uh, a lot of new we got some girls more girls gear um, coming um, yeah man I don't know this it's a lot of exciting are things. you big on Instagram mainly like is that your main focus when I it comes so. to social media I think so yeah. I, I've you know so Mike livelihood is my kind of my main hub where I push the clothes mm -hmm. DJ and it's like I said, it's my main hub. So if I come out with a music video or a new show Mike or anything, yeah. Mike Livelihood is that. Um, but yeah, other than that, man, I'm just hustling and grinding, trying Same, to keep up man. with you, champ. Uh, you already <laughs> know, but I told you this is real deal. And I'm not just talking about the podcast, but just the life that and the mission I live. Like, I'm here to make an impact and change the world. I really and, like that. You know, that's, that. the, that's the end of the results on me. Like, I can't, I don't care about money. Of course I care about money. But you know what I mean? Like, it's not my, like... It's not my like, wake okay. up, I need it. You know what I correct, mean? Correct, correct. Um, especially coming from being homeless and not having really um, a mom or father figure for my whole life. And, um, you know, I'm not trying to be sappy, but it's just, he, you know, we both can tell you that if you really want to achieve your dreams, you got to get to work. You can't sit there and ask people for help or, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. But you know what I mean? Like some oh, people ask oh. for help every day. You know, like I need help. I need help. No, bro, get down. We both probably had some sad days man and um maybe even more sadder days coming in the future but those sad days will make you the strongest person that a lot of people will look up to you and be like wow that dude did it and then they're you know so it's true um, i mean being being my own entrepreneur like like i said you got to think i quit full time approximately at the beginning of the year so i'm like three-ish four cre creeping up on four months into me only doing Do you regret music in fact absolutely not I however just just piggybacking on what you were saying mm -hmm. like when you become your own entrepreneur and you get to make your own hours and times and your own boss it's so easy to get lackadaisical and complacent when really uh you there's no every you're clocked in at all times technically mm -hmm. so making sure to remind yourself i don't know if it's like lately what i've been doing is trying to keep a, a roll of uh, motivational like YouTube videos yeah, people yeah. I don't even know but th there's this kind of things where you see them as like get after you know the inspirational shit and just somebody in your corner or make sure even the company you keep I know a lot of times we might have a bunch of friends that maybe YOLO too hard you know yeah. what I'm saying or whatever it's no, all they about do Drake YOLO. And their life is YOLO you know what I mean so yeah. so making sure the company you keep is somebody that's going to keep that fire lit and not like lead you astray and you know if you don't have that it's up to you to be really dig deep and be strong and stay focused I know me personally I gotta be honest I'm only three months deep there's so many times right now where I have to check myself and realize like man you're being you've been fucking lazy right now I mean as much as I'm still accomplishing no, yeah, uh, but yeah. even even if you're accomplished like Jordan got three a three p and the man still came back and three peated you know like I don't even have my first three p uh, where do you find the fire to three peat again after you've done it all balance. you know what I mean well I'm on no it's not even necessarily balance it's just reminding yourself that no days off continue to hustle grind put right. it at work stay motivated you still gotta take a little time off. not a day but just a little time <laughs> you, you, know you, know you do get a day yeah. I took a day off here so it was an Easter bro it was I ain't Easter. gonna lie I have not like yesterday was my first time y'all probably know well no y'all see this on Wednesday but Monday 
Um, I have dropped a video for three weeks, four weeks straight, every day. Lazy bomb. Yeah, I I'm know, smart. right? I love it. Whenever I don't <laughs> drop one, like yesterday, I'm like, I can't even sleep. I'm like, oh, I gotta do something. So no, man, it's it's um, you're totally right, bro. And I, you know, I think of me and you especially know what it's like to be, uh, you know, underdogs. If that made sense, you know, and um, it's it's just beautiful. I don't want to rant too much, but um, the last question I wanted to ask: Can you always be yourself when you wake up? I mean, what else are you gonna do? What else are you gonna be? That's that's the tricky what? thing, man. A lot of people have told me like they have alter egos, and I'm not thinking of like you know Y M Melly, huh. Y W Melly. Huh. He has like Melvin and then Marvin or whatever. I love the alter ego stuff. Yeah, I think it's cool. Well, so I'm a big Wu Tang fan. Each member in Wu Tang has like four different names for themselves. What's name? Uh, what's one? Do you know? Like, like, like Ghostface is like Pretty Tone, Tony yeah, Stark, okay. Ghost yeah. Dini. Yeah. You know, Riz is like Bobby Digital, and uh, Method Man is Johnny Blaze. Yeah, like, like yeah. they all have these various alter egos, and they might even come out with an album where they're repping that, that particular name. Person. Yeah, I mean, Mac Miller did it. He did Larry yeah. Fisherman. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so I love the whole thing. I I actually have one. It's called um, Who's Like God. Right. So he's like this mask up character. This like, I don't know. He's kind of like Sting back in the 90s. Where, and when I say Sting, I mean the wrestler. He was like technically yeah. a good guy, mm -hmm. but he was super dark. Right. He didn't say nothing. He's the one with the black and white. Yeah, he looked yeah. like the crow, but yeah, he yeah. came from the rafters with a baseball bat. And he was kind of like this bad person, but he ended up like Batman in the situation, like beating literally Batman with a yeah, bat right. but 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 you know that's yeah. kind of the character I want to do like and the reason why I named him who's like God is because who's like God is the meaning of the name Michael mm -hmm. which you know I'm Michael mm -hmm. my arch, the archangel is my mm -hmm. logo so I try to give everything a deeper tight in me yeah man, it's awesome it blending on messages so, yeah man oh, that's awesome man I'm yeah. proud of you bro because it's beautiful meeting you in person bro I know we met Thank one time you. at the 10 roof and I'm shout out to Doma again because uh, he was like, yo, the man, y'all both the man, like, y'all got to talk, and I actually <laughs> Meanwhile, see Meanwhile, he's like the swaggiest person. Yeah, I know, I know like, man. <laughs> Dude, no, I love Delma. Oh, but I don't know, but I, I, I think I already told you, but me and Delma, me and Delma are flying out. Uh, honestly, man, I got to give props to Delma on this. Like, Delma was already going to New York, and I, uh, I potentially had this connection. It wasn't even lined up. Right. I told him, I was like, hey, man, I might drive, I might just drive up there with you. You don't even have to buy a plane ticket. Let me see what's up with this thing. So had Delma not already had plans to go to New York, I might not have been as proactive on my end to try right. to line to up get things this clothing line. Yeah. So really, Energy, shout out to Delma man. for, strong. he kind of like, motivated you. He pushed the ball in the right direction for me to get this happening. Now me and him are flying up there. You're doing business. Yes, yeah, you know what I mean? which like, he's he's got a bunch of people up there. I know. Uh, I think he's making power moves with other people with crews yeah, and yeah. potentially because like, Delma raps too. Yeah, uh, I, I a know, lot of a lot of people don't realize Dude, that Delma he here's making hits. We shit. all know Delma. Delma <laughs> is on the move twenty four seven. This man been on the move ever since high school. Man, I nah. love Delma, bro. He knows what's up. I've known him for a long time. But the um, whole the whole you know, not Delma, Delma Midnight. Sorry. Yeah, Midnight. Midnight. But I mean, <laughs> even the whole his brother Tahu and the whole uh, DOA crew. So we're we're spearheading the May 27th yeah. stuff. You know, uh, shout out to Tahu, his brother. You know, Tahu is making. Um, uh, what is it? I think it's in Atlanta and Charlotte. There's like prelim b-boy tournaments and the winners of those are coming here to Charleston oh, wow. to battle for two on two for $2,000. Oh, Cause, Cause last year we did this. We already, this is volume two of the elements. Right. Last year we did it at the poorhouse. It was one on one for 500. Mm -hmm. This year we upped the ante. Delma won that, time. isn't it? Delma won that yeah, shit. He, he already texts me. He's like, yo, I'm not coming back from round two. I was like, bro, if anybody believes in you, I got you. Nah, you got this, bro. Win. He's the bro was in T Pain's music video and Young he, Gravy. Yep. Yeah. He was somewhere they just had they travel everywhere. He was like, Yo, I'm about to go win this gold in your in your livelihood sweatsuit. And oh, sure enough, hard. he was wearing the, the, the chocolate mocha joint. Yeah, yeah, head to toe. I was like, represent, man. Man. That's yeah. what I'm doing now though, is like I'm getting all my interviews here, you know, in Charleston and my people's here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just gonna take it and go everywhere around the world and you know what I mean and help other people, bro. And Get some hoodies sold for you, you know, get some music heard from you, you know, mm -hmm. help all these other people because I feel like a lot of times, you know, not trying to sneak this or anything, but like Charlemagne the God, like 
you don't hear him doing anything to help where he's from. You know, he's from here. He's from Monk's Corner and stuff like that. I didn't know he was from um, Monk's Corner. Yeah, man. And like, not saying he doesn't do anything. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that there's just certain things that could be helped in, uh, you know, opening up a crystal shop burger. Or open up a crystal burger is not one of the things. We don't need a fast food joint. You know, we need some... We need some help people learn how to make podcasts and do things that they love. Make an energy drink. I'm make an energy addicted. drink. I'm addicted to caffeine like a crackhead. <laughs> Support my crackhead. Support the cause, man. <laughs> but guys, hey, Mike Livelihood or Mike Live, I should just say Mike Livelihood uh, with Mike Livelihood, the founder, actually, I should say. Um, thank you again. Dude, it's been beautiful, bro. I Bless love you, this, and um, I can't Bless wait you. to have you on next year. It's gonna be, or even maybe even sooner if something happens. Might see him on a vlog. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog that I've been dropping lately. I know I had the Carowinds one, and then San Francisco was beautiful. Um, I can't wait to go back to there. And um, you know, just want to tell you guys, your dreams can really come true. The only way to do it though is you. You gotta get up every single day, and you gotta want it. Nobody else is gonna do it for you though. Okay, guys, I love every single one of you guys. Um, this is it. Rise, elevate. Peace. Peace.